My name is Megan Ross and I'm studying a Bachelor of Psychology at Monash University. I was on the VC Honor of Psychology and today we're going to go through the lock and key process. So in this video I'll explain what the lock and key process is, I'll go through how it is assessed by going through two different exam questions. So to start off with, every neurotransmitter has a distinct shape. So neurotransmitters are our chemical messengers um, and these all have a slightly different chemical makeup which helps to give them that unique shape. On our dendrites, we have what we call receptor sites, and these also vary in shapes. So now the shape of our receptor site and the neurotransmitter needs to be similar. This is because when they bind, they unlock a response. So the receptor site is considered our lock and the neurotransmitter the key. So when the key fits the lock, it unlocks and causes something to occur. Now this will make more sense when I go through this diagram here. So looking up the top here, we can see that we have the presynaptic neuron. This here would be considered our synaptic gap. And then down here we have the postsynaptic neuron. We have two different shapes of neurotransmitters. So we have this circle here and as well as this pentagon here. And then we have our receptor sites. Now I'm going to show you what happens when I move one of our pentagon shaped neurotransmitters. So we can see that it fits in quite nicely and that would cause a response to occur because the lock fits the key and now something would be unlocked. On the other hand, if I move one of these circle neurotransmitters, we can see that it bounces straight out because the lock does not fit the key, so therefore it is not unlocked. Now moving on to an exam question, so this is worth four marks. So with reference to glutamate, outline the process involved in successful neurotransmission once the neural impulse has reached the axon terminal. In your response, refer to the lock and key process. You may use the label diagram. Now I would stray away from using the label diagram just because they're very hard to get right because there is a lot of things you need to include. Personally, I will go for the dot point method. So four marks, four pieces of information. Now, it, because it's reference glutamate, so that will be one mark, and we need to make reference to the lock and key process, so that'll be another mark, and the rest will just go through explaining the process. So step one would be the presynaptic neuron releases glutamate into the synaptic gap. It then travels across the gap to the postsynaptic neuron, where it binds the receptor site with the corresponding shape. So that's marks one and two. Mark three would come from saying um, that this is referred to as the lock and key process, as glutamate the key, binds to the lock the receptor site and unlocks a response. So we need to specify what is the lock and what is the key and how it works. And then our fourth mark comes from explaining what glutamate does. So glutamate is an exciter in neurotransmitter and makes the neuron more likely to fire. So to go through these again, we have step one. So um, the presynaptic neuron releases glutamate into the synaptic gap. It travels across where it binds to the corresponding shaped receptor sites. This is due to the lock and key process explaining what is the lock and what is the key, and then we explain the role of glutamate. Now this is another question. So this question is very similar to the previous one, however the application is different. So when Rahaf learned to touch type when he was a child, he used only the index finger on each hand to develop his skills. As an adult, Rahaf applied for a job as an administrative assistant and needed to learn a technique called touch typing, which uses all the fingers on both hands. His touch typing skills would be tested as a part of the job selection process. So with reference to the lock and key process, explain the role of glutamate in touch typing. So here we need to refer to the lock and key process, and again we need to um, explain the role of glutamate in touch typing. So this question is worth four marks, so four pieces of information. So when glutamate binds to the complementary receptor sites on the postsynaptic neuron, it unlocks a response. This is known as the lock and key process. So in this process, glutamate is considered the key, which unlocks the receptor site the lock. So that's mark one and two. Mark three is saying that glutamate is an excited neurotransmitter which increases the chance of the postsynaptic neuron firing and action potential. Mark four, this then helps to strengthen the synaptic pathway associated with touch typing. So to go through these in a bit more detail, so our first mark comes from explaining the lock and key process. Mark two here would be saying which one is the lock and which one is the key. Mark three would explaining the role of glutamate and Mark 4 is saying what is the role of glutamate in learning and how does it help. Now it is important that you don't forget to refer to the scenario. If you don't refer to the scenario you won't get marks because that's what they are looking for with these application style questions.